All right, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Alan Villa. I'm uh, one of the co-founders here at Clipfolio. And today what I wanted to chat about was um, data shapes, uh, data types, and three of the most popular data aggregation methods. And it's one of the things that a lot of customers struggle with. And when I, when I talk to folks, really getting their shape into the right format is one of the first steps to a successful experience in Clipfolio or in any dashboard um, software whatsoever. So why don't we get right into it? And um, I'll flip to this slide where we see a very simple, typical data source. And you can see that um, it's set up in rows and columns. And typically when we talk about data, we can, have, we can divide it into a few different columns or a few different concepts. So typically when we take a look at data, we think of it as three different sections. Usually there's a date component, you can see that in the gray. There's the categorical or the dimensional values that is in blue. And then on the right hand side in pink, we have our numerical values or sometimes called our metrics. So those are the three elements that are usually contained in all data sources. And it doesn't matter if it's a tabular data source or it's a structured data source such as XML or, or JSON, the same concepts apply. But for today, we're going, to be, we're going to be looking at tabular data, which is a lot easier to understand. So why don't we get into the next uh, area, which is really understanding how your data is aggregated. And there's really three main ways that data will come out of a system, or even if you're organizing your own data, if you're working on a spreadsheet in Google Sheets or in Excel, there's three main ways that you want to think about aggregating your data. It can be transactional values, which basically means every single element or every single line item is its own transaction, and it just continues and continues throughout time. There's current values, which is basically, this is the snapshot of my data right now, and it continues to aggregate over time. And then there's the periodic summary, and that one is most often um, associated with Google Analytics data. So the data usually starts at zero, it could be a daily aggregation or a weekly aggregation or an annual, and then it sort of increases over time until the end of that period, and then it resets itself to zero. So let's have a look at those three different data aggregation types in detail. So here we have the same data again, and I'll give you a clue. If you're looking at this data, this is transactional data, one of the first clues is that transactional data usually has not only a date, but also a timestamp. So you can see that this date information has got both, not only the date, but it's also got time throughout the day. And that's because every transaction that is happening is pretty much happening in real time. We're collecting this data over time. So for example, um, you can see that milk in Canada was purchased on March 8th at 3 a.m. or 3.29 a.m. Then again, it was purchased at 4.15, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see how that goes throughout the day. Same thing for bread. So each one of these line items is a unique transaction. So bread in Mexico was purchased 452. There was one item, uh, retail price was 452. And that continues throughout the day as well. So that just aggregates over time. So really what you end up happening with transactional data is that you have data that starts from when you start collecting it right up until the present. So every single line item is a unique transaction that you can then further aggregate. So the next data that we're going to look at is current values. So if you remember, this was the one that is really the snapshot. This is my data right now. So if we look at the previous example where it was a running line item by line item list of all the transactions, this one is those line items aggregated into their categories. And now I'll give you another clue here. One of the things that's missing is our date column. But what is here is that revenue and quantity is usually a large number. So if you're looking at a large number that usually, and without a date, that usually means that you're looking at the grand total or the current value or the snapshot of your data right now. And the way that works in Clifolio is that when we refresh current value data, we actually put a timestamp into that data source. So we insert a timestamp. And this is why you don't really have a timestamp here. So we're refreshing, we're inserting the timestamp, and every time we look at that data, of course, it will be increased over the previous time. 
So again, here we've got, you know, it's aggregated by product type in this example. And then you can see each individual line item, bread in Canada, 842,000, quantity is 22,000. And the same sort of construct works for butter, for eggs, and for milk as you go down that, that, that line. So let's take a look at the third type, and this is a periodic summary. So it's quite similar to the snapshot. The only difference is that here we are aggregating throughout a certain time period. And as I said, this is the one that is most commonly uh, used in Google Analytics. So this is where most folks will see it. Google Analytics, or in this case, this data source is doing a daily aggregation. You can see that March 7th is the date at which we have aggregated our data, then March 8th comes, and then for March 9th, it would reset again at zero. So throughout the day, for bread in Canada, on that day, we sold $28.49. At the end of that day, if it's a daily periodic aggregation, it would reset to zero. So on March 8th, it reset to zero, and then counted up until the end of that day, resets to zero for the next day. And that, of course, follows exactly the same uh, pattern as the other data sources as well. So it's organized in the same fashion. So those are really the three ways that uh, data can be organized. And it doesn't matter if you're pulling data from a certain system. These are the three ways that you're probably going to see your data. Or if you're organizing and structuring your own data, these are the three ways that you want to think about creating data so that when you do bring it into a dashboarding tool like Clipfolio, your life is a lot easier when you want to visualize, when you want to filter, and when you want to slice that data. So hope that helps. Uh, again, my name is Alan Villa. I'm one of the co-founders at Clipfolio. And as always, if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to us. Thanks.